Let's pray. Father, we thank you for bringing us here. We thank you for the day we celebrate Christmas at church. Pray that you bless our time together as we study your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. And let's start with verse 1. And as we read together, as Uncle Aaron likes to say, follow along with your eyes and finger if you need to. As we read, we're going to start with verses 1 and 2. Let's start. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Let's stop right there. Now, it gives us the names of the rulers of that time. So we know that this is a historical fact. We know that this is a time, but that's why I like to call it the Christmas account. It's a historical fact. You can find it in history that this actually happened. Here it tells us who the rulers are, who the governor is. So you want to go back in history, history books will tell you exactly the same thing. Verse 3, and all went to register each to his own town. So the, the government is asking everybody go back to your own hometown and sign in and register. Now the reason they do that is that they can count how many people to, in order to collect taxes. Uh, and if you have to pay your taxes. So they want to uh, everybody register. Now Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Now, if you remember, in the Old Testament, there's a prophecy that the king will come from, the Savior will come from um, Bethlehem. Now, where was Joseph living at the time? Joseph and, and Mary. They were living in Nazareth. They were not living in Bethlehem. So if Mary was going to have a baby any time, Jesus would, should be born in Nazareth. But that's not Bible prophecy. So, so you wonder, well, how is he going to fulfill the prophecy if Jesus was really the Son of God? If Jesus was really the Messiah that God promised, then he needs to be born in Bethlehem. But there's no reason for Joseph and Mary to go to Bethlehem. Well, it turns out that in God's perfect timing, that they have to go register. And the governor, governor calls for registration, for census count. Now, they did not predict that. They didn't know that that was going to happen, but God knew. And that's why he, the prophecy was that the Savior would be born in Bethlehem. And Joseph was, a, was the house of Bethlehem, of the house of David, the lineage of David. And the Bible also tells us that the Savior will be born through the line of David, King David. And Joseph was a descendant of of, Joseph, uh, of David. And you will see that in the Bible if you look back in the earlier chapter in uh, Matthew. But here, let's move on. So here, unex <coughs> unexpectedly, by Joseph and Mary, they had to go to Bethlehem. And it's like, the baby's going to be born. I am already like this big, right? And who wants to travel all those ways to go to Bethlehem? But they had to. And indeed, that was God's plan. And he, and um, let's move on to verse 6. Put your fingers, verse 6. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And exactly the right time when they had to register that she was ready to give birth. Now, maybe she's thinking, well, maybe I can just go register and hurry up and go back home so I can be in my nice home to give birth to my first baby. But that wasn't God's plan. That was the peace. That was not the case. She had to give birth right there in Bethlehem, not in her home, own comfortable home with her family around. She was in a city where she didn't know anybody, and she had to give birth then. That was God's plan that worked everything out. And verse 7, she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there's no place for them in the inn. Now, we're very familiar with that story, right? When when she, uh, they couldn't find uh, uh, any rooms in, like, a hotel, kind of nicer room, because there are so many people in the city registering as well. And so that was a sign, too. So now we're going to focus on the next few verses in the next few minutes. Verse 8. And in the same region... There were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. I think we're familiar with this because from Christmas cards, 
and pictures that we see, but here it is. It came from the Bible. I want you to read from the Bible because sometimes we know, yeah, I know the story. I've seen the Christmas cards and the pictures, but that's where it comes from, right here in the Bible. There were shepherds on the field keeping watch over the flock by night, and an angel, one angel came, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, the Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this is the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in the manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Let's stop there. So we've seen the scene before in pictures and cards, but did you, the one angel came, and then the other heavenly a multitude, that means a lot of them, a lot of them were praising God. And saying glory to God. Now, if you were a shepherd, you see, like well, that, that, that is a fantastic show, isn't it? Wouldn't you want to be there to see? But you know, it's kind of interesting. Um, we don't see angels, not very often, I don't think, <laughs> or at all. But here is a spectacular showing. In some ways, God kind of rolls back the curtains to give us a little glimpse of what it looks like in the spiritual world. We only see the physical world. We only see what we can see with our eyes. But we know that there's more in the world than just what we see because we have a soul, we have a spirit. We know that we were created by God for eternity, for something after this world. And in some ways, this picture shows us there's something more that we don't see, but it's there. Angels. But these angels are not talking about themselves. They're not even talking about God. Who are they talking about? Jesus. They're talking about Jesus. They're saying, telling the shepherds, hey, it's not about us. Go, we want you to go find a baby. Go find a baby. And everything that they say points to Jesus. Jesus, we are to look to Jesus, not even spectacular something like angels. Like, wow, but angels, I want to see more angels. No. They point to Jesus. Something miracle happened to somebody. Oh, you know, sometimes we hear about miracles that happen. Oh, the miracle. Somebody was, they had cancer and they got healed because, you know, but it's not about the healing. It points us to Jesus. It points us to the one who's greater, who is Jesus. And they, even like now at Christmas, right? We see a lot of good stuff. We have presents and things, but it all points us to Jesus. Jesus is the one who came. The reason why we give. The reason why we give to Lottie Moon and money, because Jesus gave us everything. Now, let's move on. That we see the shepherds. Now, what do the shepherds do now? Do they say, wow, I want to see more angels. This is so great. Yeah. They listen to the angels' directions. They did not say, hey, you know, I, I want to see more angels. They immediately, in fact, let's uh, take a look at verse 15. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they believed what the Lord had said through the angels. And in verse 16, they went with haste. That means they went quick. They didn't delay. They didn't take their time and say, Oh, let's wait till in the morning, right? It's too late, whatever. They said, Wait with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them according to this child. That means they told everybody. They made known the saying. They, they told other people. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary, verse 19, treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. Verse 20, and the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, and it as it had been told them. So in Luke chapter 2, it tells us the whole first Christmas, and this is the first Christmas that we celebrate. And I want you to see that when the shepherds went there, what did they see? A baby in a manger. And, you know... You know what the angel said? The angel said to them, 
you will find a baby. But who is this baby? Bring you great news of great joy for all the people and to use born to stay a savior. So when you go see and you think this is a savior of the world, you would think that this baby might be something special, look special, maybe look uh, maybe in the better palace place. But no, the baby is an ordinary baby. And this is exactly what Jesus, God tells us. Next slide, please, uh, Uncle Man. I think I have this on the slide. Jesus said, and you know, he was just seems like an ordinary baby. And that's exactly what the Bible says. In Philippians, it says that Jesus emptied himself. That means he, 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 he did not, um, he did not take on any, uh, he took off all his royalty. Okay, he is the creator. He's the king of everything in the universe. But he emptied of that status of being the the king. He empties himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, just like you and I were born as a baby. Jesus was born as an ordinary baby. He didn't look any different than any other baby. And being found in human form, he humbled himself. That's how God came to us to save us. To, he humbled himself. He did not come as a king. He did not come as anything special. He came and humbled himself by being obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. So he, bo he was born very humble as a regular baby in the manger. He died in the worst possible death on the cross. To save us. That's what we're celebrating. And then next, next slide, please. <coughs> but of course, he's not a baby anymore. We celebrate not a baby. We do not celebrate a man who's dead. We celebrate a man, Son of God, Jesus Christ, who is now exalted. Therefore, God has exalted him, bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. That's how we worship. You know, we worship sitting, standing. We don't often worship bowing. But bowing is a sign of what? When you bow to someone, is a sign of respect, sign of that person is so great, you're going to bow. That's why, you know, boys and girls, when we tell you, when we worship to sing, it is not our tradition to actually physically kneel and bow, but standing is a sign that we use as respect. So, boys and girls, when we tell you to stand, it is a sign, just like it says, an exalted Jesus, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. That means everything is under Jesus. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Everything is about Jesus. So I just want to give you encouragement that as we celebrate this season, you're going to have a few weeks off, a couple of weeks off of school. You're going to do fun things. You might stay home and just relax, whatever you're going to do, that we look to Jesus because see, he is highly exalted. No matter what you're doing, remember it's Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Next slide, please. And the main idea is that we look to Jesus at Christmas and every day of the year. Not just at Christmas, but every day. Jesus is our Savior, and he saves us, and that we can always remember everything is about him. Sometimes I get distracted by things, too, even when I am... You know, I tell you honestly, boys and girls, sometimes when I read the Bible and I prepare a lesson, I forget that it's about Jesus. I just read the Bible and I think, oh, it's a great story. But it's not just a great story. It's all about Jesus, who is our Savior, our exalted King. Okay. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this Christmas season that we remember you are the exalted King. We don't want to forget that. We don't want to forget um, any of this. Not just uh, baby in the manger, but that you're the exalted king, our savior, who saves us from our sins. Thank you for this time of celebration. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.